Welcome to Introduction to Finance. Welcome to session two of Introduction to Finance. We're going to talk about in this session financial statements, taxes, and cash flow. Very fundamental and important session uh, for your business and personal uh, success. Some key formulas I need to know are listed here. First, the balance sheet equation. Assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. You've heard this in accounting class. It's still true in uh, finance. Um, it's got to be, my accounting teacher used to say, my assets must balance with my liabilities plus stockholders' equity. So a very key fundamental uh, equation or balance sheet identity is the balance sheet identity, balance sheet equation, assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. Uh, second, I'm going to go over another identity called the income statement. Sales minus cost equals net income. This is foundational, and every business revolves around this each and every day. If your expenses exceed your sales or revenues, you're going to go out of business pretty quickly. So this is a very, very key and important um, equation, the income statement identity. Uh, perhaps the most important identity is the cash flow identity. Cash flow from assets equal cash flow to creditors plus cash flow to stockholders, especially in the small business where each and every uh, Friday, you need to pay your employees. You have to have cash flow, positive cash flow, and cash available. So that's why this is a very, very important equation. Uh, it looks a lot like the balance sheet. If you look at the balance sheet, assets equal liabilities plus equity, this cash flow equation looks just like that. Just put cash flow from in front of the balance sheet. Cash flow from assets equals cash flow to liability holders plus cash flow to stockholders. CFFA equals CFTC plus CFTS. I like to use these abbreviations to... Um, give you a mnemonic for this very, very important identity. Uh, in a small business, you'll hear uh, the CFO or president of the company say cash flow is king. That just highlights the importance of cash flow. Finally, networking capital is another very important concept we must remember forever. Uh, working capital is equal to current assets minus current liabilities. We find all this on the balance sheet. Uh, whether it be in our, our company or in our personal life, we would like our current assets to be higher than our current liabilities, at least to the tune of two to one to be uh, in a comfortable state. So these are the key formulas we're going to go over in some detail in this session. Our learning objectives are the balance sheet, the income statement, corporate taxes, and the cash flow identity. So everything I've talked about with the inclusion of uh, also corporate taxes, um, where do taxes come from, who sets the tax rates. Again, we're going to talk about in this chapter corporate taxes, not personal taxes that you and I pay as individuals, but corporate tax rates, how are they set, who controls them. And, and this is a political process and a congressional process. Essentially, they are set by the Congress of the United States. We'll also talk about the balance sheet and its importance, the income statement and the cash flow identity, the three key financial statements that we use each and every day in our daily business and personal lives. Um, so let's move into the balance sheet, first of all. The balance sheet is a one-day snapshot of the company's uh, accounting value, its economic health. Is the company healthy or not? Uh, on one side, on, on the left side, is what the company owns, and uh, on the right side, what the company owes. So it's a measure of ownership and uh, what the company owes. Uh, usually prepared on the last day of the month. Again, it's a one-day snapshot, so we must stress that. Um, prepared on the last day. So in um, March, it's going to be prepared on March 31st. In April, April 30th. In May, May 31st. In June, uh, June 30th, and so on. It's a one-day snapshot. Includes assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. And it's got to be. The balance sheet has got to balance before you leave work that day. Assets must equal liabilities plus owner's equity. <clears throat> On the left side, uh, these are, items are listed in order of decreasing liquidity. So the most liquid items are listed first. Cash is listed first. Accounts receivable, a little bit more difficult to collect, uh, therefore second. Uh, inventory, even more difficult to sell and turn into cash uh, or liquidate quickly. And uh, finally, prepaid um, expenses or prepaid items uh, and other items. These are uh, part of your total current assets, and these are items that are expected to be turned into cash within one year. And you may see uh, slightly different um, definitions of that, but in the short term. 
Uh, on the right side, you'll see the same thing under uh, in the current category under liabilities. Current liabilities are things that you owe within one year, things that, you, that must be paid within one year to include accounts payable, notes payable, interest payable, taxes payable, wages payable. And again, some definitions might slightly change that to be uh, sooner than a year, but in general, uh, these authors like to talk about uh, having these items due within one year. What's left over is shareholders' equity. So once I take my, or I'm sorry, when I subtract these two, I take my uh, current assets, my current liabilities, and I get uh, net working capital. Uh, when I take my total assets and subtract my total liabilities, I get what's left over, and that is stockholders' equity. Uh, stockholders are residual owners of the uh, corporation, you might see some items listed in an accounting course under your shareholders or stockholders' equity, like common stock, preferred stock, uh, paid in surplus, paid in capital, and retained earnings. You may see some different terms there also, but in general, they'll be very similar to that. Uh, in general, the thing you want to remember about the balance sheet, assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. And that is a key equation that you must take with you from this course. Never forget it. Uh, assets are listed in order of decreasing liquidity, as I said. So current assets are at the top of the balance sheet, and uh, longer-term assets are at the bottom of the left side of the balance sheet. Uh, and these are things that I own on the left side. Uh, they're listed in order of decreasing liquidity. Um, and so again, current assets first, longer-term assets second. Total assets are the summation of the two. On the right side, same thing. Order, uh, items are listed in order of decreasing liquidity. Uh, current liabilities are listed first, and then longer-term liabilities like long-term debt, mortgages payable, uh, uh, things like that, bonds payable, are listed under long-term debt, again, in order of decreasing liquidity. Uh, assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. Again, I can't say that enough. That's one thing you have to remember. Uh, owner's equity, also called shareholder's equity, also called uh, very loosely uh, book value, net book value, or net worth. So you have to understand that all these items mean assets minus liabilities. Again, shareholder's equity, stockholder's equity, owner's equity, net book value, net worth, all mean assets minus liabilities. Again, dep depending upon uh, the author or the source, you may see any of those terms to mean owner's equity. Uh, networking capital, we said in an earlier session, is a very critical equation that you must remember forever, and that's the difference between current assets and current liabilities. Obviously, I like to have more current assets than current liabilities to be able to pay my bills in prompt fashion every single month. When I look at a balance sheet, I want to put um, three sets of goggles on, as I like to say, when evaluating and analyzing a balance sheet. First, I put on my liquidity goggles when I look at a balance sheet. Then I put on my debt versus equity goggles, and then I put on my market versus book goggles to look at a balance sheet. First of all, what is liquidity? Liquidity is the speed and ease with which I can turn an asset uh, into cash without a loss of value. So if I can quickly turn something into cash, it's very liquid. If it takes a little bit longer, like inventory, it's a little bit less liquid. So ease of conversion without loss of value is liquidity, and liquidity is a good thing. Uh, you're less likely to have financial distress if your company is liquid. Same thing at the end of each month. If you have some cash to pay your bills, you're less likely to get into financial distress. Uh, second set of goggles, debt versus equity. I put those goggles on uh, to look at how much debt does a company have. Some companies are uh, immensely burdened with debt, and that's usually a, a sign of trouble. Uh, right away. Some companies, if you look at their balance sheet um, in Edgar, uh, in the SEC website, you can see very quickly that these guys are going to have trouble making their debt payments, making their interest payments, and so on, and that can lead to significant financial distress. Same thing on a personal level. Uh, if you don't have a lot of uh, liquidity, it can be difficult to pay your debts and even to pay the, just the interest on that debt, much less the principal. Uh, financial leverage is a measure of your debt. When you hear the word leverage, think of the four-letter word debt. Uh, too much leverage can be a, a bad thing. Too much debt, if you buy too big a house, more than you can afford, that can put you into some sort of uh, some financial distress. So be careful uh, with your uh, level of debt that you take on on a personal basis and on a business basis. Uh, third, I want to put on my market versus book value goggles. What is the market value of the company? What is the book value? Now, book value generally means historic cost. So when you hear the term book value, think of the words historic cost. We uh, put a lot of our assets on the balance sheet at historic cost, or uh, and it's a measure of book value. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell you what it's worth in the market, what it's worth today. If you were to take um, 
a particular asset that you have and go outside and try and sell it or sell it on eBay or another website, um, you may find that the market is drastically different than book. And truly, there's no relationship between market and book. Uh, market isn't always higher than book. Book isn't always higher than market. These things can vary over time. Uh, here's a good example. Uh, look at a simple thing like a, a football card here from eTops. The book value was uh, $4.25 and uh, varies every day after that. Uh, it might be worth $3.59, it might be worth $2, it might be worth $60. So the market can vary widely from book. Book is historic cost, market is what uh, the asset is worth that day when you try to sell it.